I literally didn't want to do any of this work and I was just wondering why the heck am I even doing this in the first place. I kind of wrote like a savage today, I'm not gonna lie. I got a lot on my plate, let's just begin. What's going on? I'm John, and in this writing vlog, I'm going to be starting the rewriting for the first character, Pramana's arc. Here's how it went. Okay, so this is the first day of week eight, and already here, I'm coming into a bit of a challenge at the very beginning. Even though, in my mind, I've already handled the issues of getting appropriate rest and recovering a little bit from the burnout, I'm still having trouble rekindling the desire and the excitement that I felt toward this process at the beginning. I've spent an hour plus this morning already thinking about this and trying to figure out what is going on. Like, why am I not feeling this same level of excitement? What has changed? I think part of what changed was that the way that I was approaching this work kind of morphed due to me experiencing the burnout, due to me just feeling overwhelmed with it. And what happened was, switching over from the mindset of just really going after it and trying to sincerely pursue this goal and really work as hard as I could to achieve this goal of, you know, writing eight books in two years, of improving my skills in writing as much as possible. That initial sort of desire, that initial thing that I was chasing, that I was striving for, because of getting so tired and worn out and not taking care of myself correctly, I lost touch with that and Instead, my mindset kind of shifted to like a mode of trying to seek rest, seek ease in life, seek relaxation and seek freedom from stress. I think that is kind of how things shifted in my mind. Because of that, last week, I to be quite honest, just didn't work as hard as I normally do. I did still set a goal for the week, which was to finish the rewriting of Lucian's arc. And I did accomplish things in a way that would allow me to reach that goal by the end of the week. But I could have done more. And I know that I could have done more. And I know that it would have felt better to do more and to actually push myself. Instead, I was kind of going through the motions and feeling like, and I just wanted to do the minimum that it would take to actually make progress and be on track to continue with this challenge. So obviously that is a major change in the way that I was thinking about things to go from really pushing and sincerely pursuing the goal and going after it to trying to minimize the amount of effort that I'm putting into things, to try and maximize the amount of time that I have away from working. And I think that's why I've gotten to this negative state here of just feeling like I'm not moving in the right direction, like I'm not making progress, like I'm stagnant. And to be quite honest with you, part of it is that I don't feel like I did a good enough job with Lucian's character arc. At the time, I didn't really think about this, but yesterday I did take a break. I did go on a hike with my cousin and we drove an hour away and hiked for quite a long time. So I had some time to think and I realized that I didn't do a good enough job bringing out the positive character arc. So maybe that's part of the resistance that I felt like coming here today and saying that I was going to get started on Pramana's arc and that I was going to just start with a read through of that. I think that maybe doing that actually created some resistance for me because I felt like I would be lying to you. I'm not entirely sure. I'm literally working through this in real time talking to you because I already did a bunch of journaling and I was thinking about these things and that's how I realized that I was kind of going through the motions. But only now am I realizing that like Part of the resistance that I was feeling is that I was feeling like a liar and like I wasn't being truthful with you about where my story is and like I was putting things off, pretending that things are okay so that I can, I'll continue to work on Pramana stuff, but then in the background, you know, under the surface, I can figure out some way to improve the solution and stuff, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I guess that's changing my plans a little bit and I do definitely have to work on Pramana's stuff a lot to finish this free write because his is going to be the most difficult of the arcs. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get started on rereading through Lucian's arc one more time because I need to look for ways to bring out this positive character arc and make sure that it's being expressed properly. Oh, and also, I really need to actually be pushing myself and I need to actually be working hard. Really, I don't want to be giving this a half effort. I don't want to be just going through the motions because it doesn't feel good. It feels 
like there's something wrong it feels distant it feels like i'm not doing what i need to do to actually improve so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to be getting back into this work and part of that is because i want to finish all the rewriting this month by the end of august and look here it's august 19th and i still have to finish whatever i'm going to be doing with lucian and i have to finish going through for Fermana and fixing his story Let's stop rambling about this. Let's just get right into the actual writing. I'm going to have 11 minutes of footage to edit and that's going to be brutal, but let's just get right into this actual work and let's start going back through Lucian's arc again. Okay, so I just spent a ton of time thinking through the overall fundamentals of the story of the positive growth arc and trying to figure out what I could do to make it more resonant, what I could do to make the story feel more congruent and like there's an actual central lesson to this character's story. And I did finally figure something out for this. So I think that what I need to do now is look through some of these scenes and try to figure out which scenes need to be changed in order to highlight this new perspective on the character growth in this story. So that is what I'm going to focus on right now. Let's just get right into it. Okay, so once again, I have looked into some of these scenes and I've figured out ones that I need to change in order to really solidify, really stress key elements of the positive growth arc. I was looking through once again some of the save the cat bullet points and the sort of checklist that they have for the different beats in the positive growth arc. So that is what I worked through and now I know which scenes I need to adjust. There is at least one scene that I need to rewrite completely because I've changed it completely and it's that same scene that I've rewritten a million times there at the end but it is a really important scene honestly and I found a way to create this like moral dilemma for the character well for Lucian so that he has to he's basically offered a chance to have everything that he wants but in exchange for taking that he would have to give up on sort of the thing that he needs right so i was able to really fix some of these elements of the story obviously i still need to make these changes i may or may not start on this right here today honestly you know what i'm gonna start on this today because i don't have that much time to finish with these rewrites and I have a lot to work on for Fermana's arc. I need to write some of the backstory scenes that I haven't even gotten a chance to write yet as well as actually doing the rewriting that's going to be necessary for his arc in general which is going to be more than normal because his was the least thoroughly outlined beforehand. So I'm gonna keep working on Lucian's stuff here because I really need to get some, make some good progress on this if I'm going to be able to finish the rewriting in this month of August. I'm going to take a little bit of a break because I haven't taken one yet so far and then I'm going to come back and start rewriting some of these scenes for Lucian. Okay so I've already worked through the first six of the scenes that I had marked to rewrite. I have five left to go. However some of these remaining scenes are actually going to be a lot more work like this one, especially in the finale, is going to be a complete rewrite. And it's one of the most important scenes in the entire story, if not the most important scene. So that one is going to take a while to write. And I don't think that I'm going to be able to get to that today. So I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to save these scenes for tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm also planning on starting, if not finishing, the read-through of Pramana's arc. I'm definitely feeling a lot better than I was this morning when I literally didn't want to do any of this work and I was just wondering why the heck am I even doing this in the first place. So I'm really happy with the progress I was able to make today, especially on the mental side of things. I honestly didn't think at the start of this day that I would be able to transform the way I was thinking about this to such a large degree. And the fact that I felt so much resistance at the start of the day, like I didn't even really want to do this at all, it was really weird. Especially after having breaks that are sufficient, that I'm actually enjoying and taking time away from this work. I was really confused about why this was still happening. And I'm happy that I was able to spend the time this morning to really work through these details, to figure out why I was feeling this resistance, to figure out why I was having 
this sort of negative motion tied to this process and to get myself back on the right track so that I can keep working on this project and actually give my all toward this project and not just go through the motions. For now, I'm going to call it here for today and I will see you back tomorrow to continue working on this rewrite and starting the rewriting of Pramana's arc. Okay, so I'm back here for day two and I'm going to start with working on these scenes that I left off from yesterday of Lucian's arc that I still have to write. Just looking at them now, I realize that there are actually a decent amount that I have to rewrite to a large extent. The second scene of the Dark Knight of the Soul I have to rewrite to a large extent. The break into three I have to rewrite to a large extent. The One of the main scenes of the finale I have to rewrite completely and the other two scenes don't need quite as much work. And I also want to read through Pramana's arc today and take notes on that, on the big picture stuff. So I got a lot on my plate. Let's just begin. Okay, so I've rewritten all of the scenes up till the finale scene. And with the way that I've changed up the scene, it's going to be rewritten pretty much completely, pretty much from scratch. So this one is definitely going to be the one that takes the longest, but it's also going to be one of the most interesting and one of the most fun scenes of the entire story. So I'm looking forward to writing that. However, since it's going to take so long, I'm going to take a quick break right now before I get back to it. Okay, so I've just finished with all of Lucian's scenes now, with all of the rewriting for him, officially. And I actually feel good about the way the story turned out this time, so much better than where it was last time where I left off. The end is so much more resonant, and it feels like it's actually a growth arc rather than just like a half growth arc, half abandoned growth arc ending that doesn't really have any sort of connection with the growth arc. So now, as promised, I want to get on to the reading section. I want to start reading Pramana's story and start to pay attention to what is going on in this story and see what I need to fix, what I need to change, and what I'm going to be working on next with this rewriting process. So let's start working on the read through of Pramana's arc and let's see where it goes. Okay, so I've already gotten to page 78 of my story out of 150 pages. So I'm more than halfway through the story. I didn't really get the best sleep for a few nights in a row there. So I'm still kind of recovering from that and the sleepiness just came on and I'm not really able to focus quite as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my break. I'm trying to let my legs recover a little bit more from the exercise that I've been doing. So this week I'm taking a really light week. I might just walk like two miles or something, something simple like that. I'll come back and do my normal routine stuff and then I will be back to read some more in just a little bit. So I will see you in just a bit when I'm back from my break. Okay, so I'm back from my break and I'm ready to continue with my reading here. I so far do think the story is going pretty well. I think there's a little bit of character inconsistency with Pramana. He grows a little bit too suddenly and I think it's just doesn't really feel realistic. I think his problems should linger for longer or there should be some sort of reason why he overcomes them, some sort of uh, distinguishing point that teaches him how to overcome them. So that's one thing that I'm definitely going to have to focus on with the rewriting because this is one of the most important parts of this arc is this character growth. Otherwise, I think the story goes all right. I do think because of the nature of it being like a quest and the journey from one place to another and then even from there to another place, it does jump around a lot. So I do need to be better about using narrative summary to connect the different scenes and make sure that I'm including sequels and I'm saying why they're making this decision to move on to the actions that we'll see in the next scene. But for now, I need to focus on actually finishing the reading and seeing what I can learn and what other sort of notes I can take. So let's just continue with that and see how it goes. Okay, so I just finished looking through the entire story and I took a few notes overall. However, the main notes that I have are one, about the character arc of this main character of Pramana, 
and making sure that this growth feels realistic and gradual enough to actually make sense or that there's some sort of triggering event that makes it seem like there'd be a reason why he would change. And the second of the main notes is that I get clear on his motivations because originally he was motivated by trying to help his family, but at the end of the book, he really hasn't resolved this aspect yet. I kind of got away from that aspect about halfway through this story. So I need to make sure that that thread is resolved as well, or that I'm handling it in some sort of way that makes sense. So I'm thinking next steps is for me to go back through and look through the entire plot, the entire outline, and focus on the specific plot points and the specific beats, and make sure that I think they're satisfying all the traditional points of the character arc after having actually written these scenes out and having them end up potentially different than what was in the outline. So that's one of the big things I'm gonna work on. Oh, and also, I feel really good about the progress I made today. It was definitely not an easy day, but I did push myself really hard and I pushed myself to stick to a high standard as well, like really focusing on the quality and not just focusing on like accomplishment of specific tasks, focusing on doing a good job accomplishing all of these tasks and giving my best effort toward them. So I'm very happy with the effort that I put in today and I would love to continue with this effort because it feels so much better to work like this than to work in that sort of half effort manner. So that's all I've got for today and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>
where things were going terribly across the entire world. So he's starting to see signs of things leading toward that. And because of that, he's realizing that focusing on just, you know, helping his family financially and that sort of thing is really not the thing that he could do to help them the most. What he really needs to do is figure out what's going on and find a way to prevent the events from repeating again. So you may recognize that fantasy trope, um, but I actually like that one. So <laughs> it's not like the, the chosen one trope for me. So that's one of the things I'm going to focus on here next is looking for ways to allude to this historical period and for Pramana to see parallels between the historical period and what's currently going on and where things seem to be headed. So by showing that things are heading in this direction, I think I'll be able to make it obvious to the reader that the financial situation is the least of their worries and actually he really needs to focus on solving this thing instead. Okay, so now I've gone through and added in changes for both of those two other things that I wanted to fix. The foreshadowing about the historical period and how it is looking similar to what's going on now, as well as showing Pramana's character growth a little more subtly over time. Okay, so all in all, I have 18 scenes to work through in total. Some other scenes that I'm going to work on here are the prologue, because I think I finally know enough about it to start writing it. Um, and it's actually from the perspective of a character that's present in Pramana's arc and also some of Pramana's backstory scenes. So for now, I'm going to take a very short break, and then I'm going to come back and start with writing the prologue, and after that, rewriting some of these scenes and adjusting things based on the changes I just decided on. Okay, so I finished the first six of the scenes to rewrite all the way up till the fun and games. So I'm gonna call it here for today. It is already time for me to eat some breakfast and I made really good progress today. I was able to figure out exactly what I need to do in this story to improve it. And now I'm executing on this plan already. I finished six of the scenes and I wrote the prologue. Tomorrow I'd like to get through the remaining 12 rewrites. And if I have time, I'd also like to start writing some of the backstory scenes. So I'm making great progress on this here and I'm really happy with how I was able to do this today. I'm gonna call it here, I'm gonna go eat some breakfast, and I will see you back tomorrow. Okay, so here I am back for day four of this week, and I am going to focus specifically on rewriting today, as well as potentially writing some of the backstory scenes for Vermont. To start off this day, I do want to talk about something that I've experienced recently. As I mentioned before, I was talking about how I felt like I was going through the motions and having trouble feeling like I just wasn't working that hard, I wasn't really pushing myself anymore, and I'm realizing that one of the things that might be useful to help me avoid this is by setting some sort of goal at the start of the day. As you know, before when I was first starting off and I was doing this challenge, when I was writing 5,500 words a day, I was a very clear goal that I was aiming for. And every single day I could know if I hit 5,500. The thing that was nice about that goal is that it was a pretty difficult goal to achieve, but it was something that I could achieve every single day. And because of that, if I finished my 5,500 for the day, I felt like I had made a ton of progress. I was really proud of that. And I think that that is a useful thing to have for even these other days where I don't necessarily have a word count. So what I wanna do today is mimic this by figuring out a goal here at the start of the day that I know is going to be difficult, but that is something that I could do. And by setting this goal at the start of the day, I will give myself the opportunity to achieve something difficult, and then I can feel good about having done that. So right now, I just wanna take some time to think about this goal for the day and what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll come back and tell you what I've decided on, and then we can actually get started on it. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to work through all of these fun and game scenes, all of the rewrites, and once I've finished all of those rewrites, then I'm gonna go back and start working on some of these some of these backstory scenes, I would like to finish at least two of them. It's kind of hard to know how long one of these scenes is going to be compared to how long it takes to actually rewrite a scene. So that's my goal for the start here today. For now, let's just get started on the rewriting. Okay, so I've gotten through the first of these six rewrite scenes so far. So that means that I have six left to go. And I should be able to complete those relatively quickly, I hope, because that will let me have time to actually write those last two scenes, the backstory scenes. 
Anyway, I'm getting a little bit tired here, so I'm going to go and just take a quick break. Just take a few breaths outside. I'll come back and continue with this free writing in just a bit. Okay, so I finished going through all of the rewriting scenes, which means that I've already written 12 scenes here for the day, which is pretty darn good, honestly. I feel like I did a really good job during these scenes, and now I'm ready to move on to some of the backstory. These scenes I'm going to be writing for the very first time, so it's a little bit different. And also, one thing to note about these scenes is that I haven't extensively plotted them out yet. I haven't decided on the main three elements for each of these scenes in the scene sequel structure. So what I'm gonna do first for the scenes I'm going to write today, these first two, is go through and figure out the scene sequel structure for them. And then I will get into starting the writing for each of these scenes. And also one note on something that happened in the rewriting today that actually ended up working out really well. I changed this one part of the story so that the main character was given some sort of warning by the the big bad, we'll say, in the, what's it called, TV tropes terms. The main character was given this warning, basically, and it set it up such that because of the lie, because of the weakness that he had at the beginning of the story, future events that occur end up being more plausibly his fault. So that was a good thing for the Darkness of the Soul that I ended up being able to use later on. So good things all around. The story is looking better. And now it's time to get into doing some of this writing of backstory scenes. Okay, so I have just finished writing the two backstory scenes and these were actually pretty fun to write. I've never written a character so young before, so it was interesting trying to write somebody like this. I feel like it might not have been exactly the right age. I'm not sure. It's hard to remember what it was like when I was 10 or below, but I think I've gotten some sort of youngness to his voice and I might have to change it up a little bit to make him seem a little bit older or younger depending on how I want to go with this. But for now, I think it's going well. I've written the first two scenes which are pretty much like the happier of the backstory scenes <laughs> and then let's just say things go south. But anyway, I have finished my writing for the day. I actually feel really good about this. This was not an easy task at all to do 12 of the rewriting scenes and then also to add on to that two complete scenes written so i'm very happy with the progress i've made today and i'm looking forward to continuing tomorrow with finishing up these backstory scenes and then figuring out where to place them in the story and then getting to actually reread through the entirety of Pramana's arc and seeing how these changes have worked but i'll save the rest of that for tomorrow and before I go, I did want to note, because I realized that I haven't talked about what I was reading for like a really long time. So yes, of course, I've been reading more fantasy. I read Dawn Shard, the novella by Brandon Sanderson, and I'm in the process of reading The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be getting a third book to read after this one, which is why I was kind of hesitant to start it. But I figured, you know, I might as well, since I liked the first one anyway. I'm also going to be reading the second book in the First Law trilogy, soon enough. So of course, tons of fantasy that I'm reading. That's all for that. I need to go out and do my exercise today. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so today it is day five and I am focused on writing the backstory scenes for Pramana's arc for the very first time. I have four scenes left to write in this backstory and later on I would like to figure out where they're going to land in the actual main storyline, like where they're going to sit in Pramana's story. First things first, I need to actually go through these and outline them a little more specifically because all I have right now is a synopsis. I don't have the three points of the scene sequel structure, so I'm going to figure those out for all four of these scenes and then I'm going to get into actually writing these scenes. They should be really interesting scenes to write. There's like a little mini story here in this backstory subplot, I guess, and I'm excited to be able to finish off the story here today with these four scenes. Okay, so I just finished writing the third scene of the backstory. And to be quite honest, this one took a very long time to write. Partially it was because I hadn't done some of the world building that was needed for this scene. Partially it was just because I was trying to figure out what was going to happen in the scene specifically. 
I only had a very vague idea, so it ended up being kind of a slow scene to write. So I'm going to continue with writing the very next scene. This one I'm going to need to do a little bit of research for as well, so it might end up being a little bit of a slow scene to write too, but at the very least I've decided I'm going to finish these four scenes and also place them somewhere in the story that makes sense. So that is what I'm aiming for doing today and that is what I'm going to do. So even if it takes a while to write these scenes, it's going to happen. So I ended up having to add an extra scene, bringing the total to five backstory scenes that I'm going to have to write today. Um, but I think that it would be fine and I think this extra scene is actually going to help support things. So let's just write that and then continue. Okay, so I just finished up all my writing and I kind of wrote like a savage today, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly was a little bit tired of it about halfway through, but I was able to figure out a way to motivate myself. I didn't want to stop and start recording and get distracted by that, so I'm just giving it to you right here afterward. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know what the starting point was. It might have been around 112,000 words, but I finished over 118,000 words today. It was quite a bit of writing today. And after finishing that, as promised, I came through and started looking into where I think these backstory scenes would best fit into the story. So I kind of just arranged them in a way that I thought would make the most sense. These two backstory scenes are relatively short, so I put them together. This one comes in a moment that I think is relevant for what's happened after the break into two and what it's kind of like leading into. And then we have the remaining backstory scenes, which I ended up basically just spreading out a little bit. I tried to place them all around key moments where I think they would make the most sense to be. They're way into the past for Fermana and on a completely different timeline, so it's kind of hard to know where to place these scenes. But tomorrow I'm going to take the time to actually put them where they are on this outline, and then I'll read through this entire story and figure out if I like the locations of them as well as the other big picture factors that I had changed. And then we'll see what else is left to change for the next draft. So overall, this draft contained a ton of changes. I added a prologue, I added backstory, and I rewrote 18 scenes as part of this draft. And just to give you an idea, there's about 33 scenes in each of these. So 18 is more than half of the scenes. So it was a lot of changes to this draft. But I'm thinking that it's going to be a lot better and I'm excited to be able to read through and see how it went. So for now, I'm going to call it a day and I will see you tomorrow with the rereading through this version of the draft and hopefully even more improvements. Okay, so I'm back here for day six, the last day of the week. And what I'm going to be doing today is reading back through all of Pramana's arc, including the backstory scenes, and you know, maybe even including the prologue. I'm looking for the big picture things to potentially change in this arc. And so in order to do that, first I actually have to sort the scenes in order, basically. I had figured out where the backstory scenes were going to go as on the outline in Plutter, but I hadn't actually, you know, copy pasted each of the backstory scenes to their place in the actual story. So I'm going to be doing that. Let's do it. Okay, so I just went through and figured out the ordering of all this stuff, putting the various backstory scenes in the right places, and exporting this entire thing so that I can actually read it as a PDF. And at first I thought this reading wasn't really going to be a big deal, it wouldn't be that hard. However, looking at the page count with 183 pages for this character, I'm thinking that this might be sufficient work. <laughs> but the read-throughs are definitely hard because of the length of them and how much time it takes just focusing on one single thing. I'm just gonna get started on reading and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I just finished reading the first third of the story here and taking a few little notes. There wasn't too much yet. I actually do think the story is coming out really well. So we'll see what happens later on, but Things are good so far. So for right now, I'm just going to take a little break and I'll be back to read more and see what happens. Uh, 
Okay, so I've made some good progress. I'm already on page 134, but I still have a while to go. I have a little bit less than a third of the story left to read through, and unfortunately, I'm realizing that I should have taken a few more notes when I was reading through this one. I was really trying to look for big picture things, you know, things around the character or the story or that sort of stuff, and I'm not finding any, but I realized that I should have also been looking for inconsistencies, plot holes, and that sort of thing because I could have gone through and figured a few of those out. So I'm starting to write them down, but I only started writing them down around the midpoint. So I definitely missed a few of them earlier on. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do about that at this point, but for now, I'm just gonna finish this and try to take as many big picture notes as I can. And I'll take down the plot hole notes as well if I see any for the remainder of the story. But overall, I'm enjoying the writing so far. I'm enjoying the story and I think that the story is actually pretty solid. For now, I'm just gonna take a little break and I'll be back in just a bit to finish with this reading. Okay, so I did manage to take a few notes still here. I got about half a page, and most of them are related to the things that I had just been writing, the new stuff that I had written, specifically the backstory stuff. Because I had a vague idea about what was going to happen in the backstory as I was writing some of the climactic scenes, I ended up including some information that was what I thought the backstory scenes would be like before I actually had them more detailed. So there's inconsistency between those. Otherwise, I feel like the backstory scenes, some of them might be a little bit too far apart. For example, the fourth backstory scene leads right into the fifth. As far as time is concerned, they occur chronologically right after one another. So I'm not sure how much time I can put between them and have it work. I do like the space between them for intrigue reasons and for leaving questions open and that sort of thing. But I think too much space will feel a little bit like, it'll make the reader stop caring. They'll be focused on all this other stuff, and they'll be like, what was happening last time in this? So I do think that it might be good to have some of those a little more close together. Overall, I really think this story is going well. Pramana's arc turned out a lot better than I was thinking, because I hadn't outlined it that specifically at the start. I thought there were going to be huge problems. And of course, there were a lot of things I had to fix during the first rewrite. But as things are looking right now, I actually feel like this is going really well. Next week, I'll start with this a little bit. I'll look into some of those plot holes because I'd already handled plot holes for Ella and for Lucian. So I may as well handle plot holes for Fermana before I move on to the next phase of self-editing. So that's what I'm going to be working on the next time I get to this. This is actually the last day before my break day tomorrow. So I'm going to be getting to that other stuff next week. For now, I just want to take a little bit of time to reflect on the most important lesson that I learned from this week, and I will share it with you in just a bit. Okay, so the most important lesson that I learned this week was not necessarily one specifically pertaining to writing, but one that pertains to mindset more than anything, and one that I think could help all of us, not just writers, but as writers, this is especially important for us. The main lesson that I learned this week was the importance of holding yourself accountable and the importance of doing this on a regular basis. And the reason why I learned that this is so important is because I had noticed this pattern in my life where I'm really rah-rah, I'm working really hard on something, I'm putting a lot of energy into it, and then over time, it just seems like the energy starts slipping, things start popping up, distractions, whatever it is, and I start losing some of that energy toward it. I start not working as hard toward it. I start going through the motions toward this goal. And the problem with this, obviously, is that if you're not actually putting in the effort that it's going to take to accomplish the goal, then you're not going to get there. So when I saw this happening for myself again with this writing, when I saw myself starting to feel like I was going through the motions with regard to this rewriting phase, I realized that I needed to do something different. I needed to actually make sure that I was putting in enough work to feel good about and to actually know that I was working hard toward accomplishing this goal. And so that led me to doing two things, both of which I think are really important for us writers. First, setting some sort of goal for the day, something that is hard, that you know will be difficult, and that when you finish, you can feel a sense of satisfaction from doing. And this is especially important if you don't really have a word count goal like you might normally when you're doing typical drafting. It can be really easy, like it was for me, to not have a really challenging goal each day, and then slowly you just start to slip into this pattern of trying to do the minimum, trying to get through the work in an easy way rather than setting your sights for something difficult and challenging yourself to accomplish it each day. From what I literally saw during this week, it is obvious to me 
that unless you're setting goals that are challenging for yourself and you're accomplishing those, you're just not going to feel good. It's really hard to feel good about yourself when you're not actually pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, when you're not actually doing things that are difficult, when you're not actually accomplishing anything that's going to move you forward and making progress in your life. So that is the first thing. Make sure that you're setting these hard goals. But secondly, and this is more of the main lesson that I learned this week, is to hold yourself accountable. What I mean specifically for this is to check in with yourself on a regular basis. I mean, you could do this even more than just once a day, but I'm just doing it once a day for simplicity. Every evening I'm going through and I'm, and I'm looking at specific questions related to my big goals in my life. For example, did I make enough progress moving toward these goals today? On a scale of one to 10, how much progress did I make in moving toward these goals? And then what would I have to do to raise that score in that second answer to something higher? And by holding myself accountable to these questions and to these goals every single evening, I've been able to make much more progress. I've been able to feel much better about the work that I'm doing and get myself back in the groove instead of being into this like state where I just don't feel good about the progress I'm making and about the writing that I'm doing. So that is the main lesson I learned this week. And I really think this is a super valuable lesson. I definitely want to continue with this journaling every single night because it's already been amazing so far. So if you're out there and you're feeling like you're really not making that much progress toward your writing goals, you just feel this sense of dis-ease around them like something is off, but you don't really know what it is, then maybe this would be a good thing for you to try out. So I'm curious, when you're not in the drafting phase with the convenience of word count goals, how do you set goals for your writing work for the day? Do you use time? Do you use some specific point you want to get to in rewriting or editing? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button so the YouTube knows to share with other writers like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I hit my hand on the desk and it was loud. Hopefully, I don't blow out all your eardrums over there. Don't worry, I can fix it in editing, but... <laughs> okay, peace. <clears throat>